Perfect. Thank you very much. Yesterday, I talked to someone really smart at our booth. And they said, I've been coming to this conference for many years. I've been in the industry for many years. But I'm starting to see the same thing over and over again. And I want to see what's the new big innovative thing for our industry that's really going to take things to the masses. And I said, great. Have you heard about meme coins? Not actually. I said, what do you think about tokenized assets? And she said, look, I think they're great, but we're still really far away from that actually coming and being something of use. Today, I'm going to talk about why we are not far away from tokenized assets reaching mass adoption and how Chainlink CCIP unlocks massive tokenized asset adoption. The global financial system has been evolving since the beginning of history. We started with bartering 6,000 years ago, coins, paper, and now we're in digital, moving on blockchains, what we like to call on-chain finance. On-chain finance, though, is still just a small fraction of a percent of the overall value across global finance. We're $2.4 trillion market cap overall. The rest of the value in the world is hundreds of trillions. So the question then becomes, how do we unleash on-chain finance? How do we move all this value from legacy, inefficient, old financial systems onto blockchains? It's time to tokenize the system. Tokenizing the system means bringing all the off-chain value into tokens on-chain so we can conduct global finance on-chain. These tokenized assets can be anything from currencies to equities, bonds, infrastructure. Some tokenized assets will be easier to tokenize than others, but at the end of the day, if anything can be tokenized, it will be tokenized. Why tokenize? Anything tokenized on chain has a superior, is represented in a superior uh, way. It inherits all the amazing, beautiful properties that blockchains offer. Let's take an example of a treasury bill. Tokenized, brought on chain. You now have increased composability amongst all blockchain applications, transparency, reduced costs, global access, fractional ownership, new markets, democratization. Tokenization brings all these incredible properties of blockchain to off-chain assets. Another example, the US dollar, right now the most successful tokenized asset, currency, dollar, Tokenized, most people know this as a stable coin. And again, it inherits all these incredible properties of blockchain. And we're starting to see other assets like commodities, gold become tokenized. This is the biggest market opportunity in human history ever. Over the next six years, many financial institutions and experts expect that Tokenized assets can reach 16 trillion in value. Right now, stable coins and other uh, assets that are becoming tokenized are again, a fraction of a percent of this market opportunity. There's such a massive opportunity here. And it's not just me saying this, 97% of institutional investors agree that tokenization is gonna revolutionize finance. And I mentioned 16 trillion over the next years. The whole world's financial and, and value is over $800 trillion in value. This can all eventually be tokenized and brought on chain. So what are the benefits of tokenizing? I mentioned a few earlier. A few that stick out as very important are, first of all, global accessibility. When you tokenize something, your market expands from a small siloed area to the globe, anyone with an internet connection. A tokenized asset system reduces the risk of fraud. We have the CEO of BlackRock, $9 trillion assets under management, quoted saying, 
this eliminates all corruption by having a tokenized system. This is incredible. And of course, the driving force that is going to push assets to become tokenized uh, and is most obvious is the reduction in cost. We're going from middlemen, paperwork, uh, you know, confusing systems, transactions to blockchain, smart contract, Oracle networks. Shortens value chains, reduce transaction costs, and of course, you have automated workflows. So then the question next becomes, okay, what's holding tokenized assets back? This sounds too good to be true. There are many problems. I think one of the most important problems and the one I'm gonna talk about today specifically is interoperability. We all know blockchains are inherently disconnected from other chains. A tokenized asset issued on a single chain is isolated to that single chain. You're disconnected from all other markets. This multi-chain fragmentation really creates almost these digital islands of disconnected liquidity. And without interoperability across blockchains, tokenized asset adoption will fail. No interoperability means fragmentation of liquidity. This is a very hard problem to solve. We've had almost $3 billion of bridge hacks over the last two years. This is a number that we must do everything in our power to reduce and eliminate. We need a highly secure interoperability standard. And we do have it. It's Chainlink CCIP. Chainlink CCIP solves the blockchain interoperability problem for tokenized assets. CCIP enables tokenized assets to be securely sent across blockchains. CCIP enables users on any chain to buy a tokenized asset. Issue a tokenized asset on one chain, access the markets of every other chain. And last but not least, CCIP has some incredible, incredible features, one of which are programmable token transfers by which you can send a token and data simultaneously across chains. A token with a message riding on top of it with instructions for what to do with that token on the destination chain, which enables a whole world of incredible opportunities uh, beyond what's ever been possible. How is Chainlink CCIP so secure? Chainlink CCIP is secured by Chainlink industry standard decentralized Oracle networks. The same networks that have enabled over $10 trillion of value transacted across blockchains are now securing cross-chain transactions. And Chainlink CCIP works with a defense in depth approach to security. There's not just a single way to stop and, and, and ensure security, it's defense in depth. The core of the defense in depth of CCIP is something called the risk management network. And the risk management network verifies every single transaction through CCIP, providing secondary approval, and ensures that there are no uh, any sort of issues by providing anomaly detection, securing tokenized asset transfers across chains. So where do we go from here? With the interoperability problem solved by Chainlink CCIP, it's time to tokenize the system. And we're already getting started with this. If you're interested in learning how to move USDC cross-chain with CCIP, you're welcome to scan the QR code, come see us at our booth, and I'm very happy to welcome Seamus from Circle to the stage, and we're going to have a talk about the partnership and collaborations we're working on. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Hey, everyone. Good to see you. Great presentation. Thank you. Does this work? Can everyone still see? You want me to come over there? Yeah, if you want to grab a seat here. Cool. Cool. 
Yeah, thanks so much, Seamus, for, for joining. Um, maybe you could just tell the crowd a bit about yourself and how the conference has been for you so far. Sure. Hey, everyone. My name is Seamus Noonan. I'm on the business development team at Circle. I lead all of our blockchain partnerships there. I've also had the pleasure of working with the Chainlink Labs team, so really excited to be here. Thank you very much. And uh, Seamus, so how do you feel about you know, tokenized assets and, and where are things headed with USDC? Tokenized assets, it's definitely the buzzword of the conference, I'd say. Tokenized assets or AI, it's, it's up there for both. And if folks who don't know USDC, USDC is one of the original tokenized assets. In, it's the dollar, it's a digital dollar. And what we're really excited about, and we're going to keep proliferating and helping push the industry forward, is access to that dollar. And it's a lot of what Michael talked about. And tokenizing an asset inherently opens that up. It's open, it's permissionless, and it's borderless. And that's what we're really excited about. And what I'd say is USDC was, was introduced in 2018, and we saw some early initial product market fits in DeFi. And that's been great, and that's going to continue to proliferate. What we're really excited about is phase two, which we would call the utility phase. And tokenized assets is a great example of exactly how users and individuals and companies can start to use this in day-to-day -day operations. So that's, that's what I'd say we're really excited about. Yeah, thank you for that. And Chainlink and Circle are partnering on a number of things. Uh, could you talk a bit about what you're excited for with that? Absolutely, absolutely. I would say once we started talking, it was very inherently clear there was a lot of synergies and shared goals around what do we want to do in the Web3 landscape? What can we do to help accelerate and push this industry forward? And one of those unlocks is, is helping developers and helping them build protocols in, in you know, the next app that might actually onboard the next half a billion, not billion yet, users into Web3. So the more we were talking and engaging, the more inherent we had a lot of synergies around that. So like you mentioned, being able to move USDC from one chain to another in the most secure and safe way through CCIP. Um, there's also a handful of other services, and, and folks will have a, bun a bunch of call to actions of just where developers can go, what services they can use, and with the heart of everything in mind of how can we make it safe, easily, and accessible. And especially for all of the Web2 developers, we're hearing so much from them of saying, hey, these are requirements that we have in our Web2 apps we need in the Web3 landscape. And I would say both of our companies uh, have really taken it to heart and trying our best to, to make that a reality. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mentioned earlier, but we did uh, have a master class that anyone can take by scanning that QR code. And we have many other uh, uh, developer events planned for building with USDC and CCIP, and we're really excited for that. Um, so USDC, amazing, amazing stablecoin, almost $30 billion market cap. Um, how are you thinking about the future of kind of multi-chain? Yeah, so USDC natively is on 15 different blockchains, and we hope to continue to expand to more. And our goal is to go where the users are going, seeing what the use cases are, how can we enable a safe asset with a unified source of liquidity on these new blockchains. But inherently, as you launch USDC natively on these new blockchains, users are presented with options of like, okay, my USDC is on Arbitrum. I might want to go do something on base. How do I get that over? And that's why we rolled out our cross-chain transfer protocol last year, last April. And it essentially, it's a public permissionless way for users to, to flow USDC from one chain to another through a mint and burn functionality. And, and we like to say it's even teleporting. You're not bridging it. And we want to have a world where users don't even have to think about security or anything like that. They can just move their USDC from one chain to another um, and not have to worry about hacks or exploits similar to, to what you had up there. So in terms of interoperability, we're looking for single unified sources of liquidity. We're looking for the most safe and secure way for users to bring USDC from one chain to another. So that, that's, that's how we're thinking about it. And I'm sure there's, there's more services and things that will hopefully roll out, maybe in conjunction with you folks, for allowing users to get USDC from one chain to another easily. Yeah, thank you for that. And we, just, we see a future of uh, more blockchains, more public chains, private chains, the entire multi-chain ecosystem expanding and, um, you know, uh, to be able to transfer USDC uh, via CCIP 
is something that our developers and everyone's very excited for. And um, yeah, we're, we've been really excited about that recently. So yeah, um, thank you, Seamus. Just last question, um, you know, looking forward, is there anything else you'd like to mention to Chainlink developers uh, watching this uh, talk? Yeah, definitely. We're going to have a ton of stuff we're partnering together on. We're going to have a ton of call to actions. Um, I, I, I'll be sticking around. I think Michael will as well. So if anyone's thinking about building a project or curious about integrating, please feel free, swing by. We have a lot of call to actions. I would say I'm, I'm just like closing thoughts. I'm really excited about some of the use cases I've heard. And I was talking to someone earlier today and they're like, hey, I've been working in the crypto industry for seven years. Last month, I finally got paid in USDC holy shit, it's so easy. <laughs> and that's what we're excited about, right? Like he said, he's like, truly, he's like, I live in England and, and I get paid in USDC. And he said it took about a minute and a half for that transfer. And he said I saved $300 in bank fees. So he, like that's, I, I feel like this year there's a lot of energy, but there's a lot of things that are backing up the, the claims of, hey, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. So we're really excited to partner together. And I'm sure there's folks in the audience that are thinking about something Come give it a shot, come build, come work with us. Um, so in terms of call to action, join the Discord. We have a Discord um, for USDC if you want to come join the community. It's Build on Circle. You can find us on X or Twitter, Build on Circle as well. And I know we're going to have a, a handful of collaboration and, and content. But uh, super excited to hopefully meet some of you folks. And excited to see where we're going to be a couple months a year from now, Michael. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and for Chainlink, you can follow us on Twitter, you can hop in our Discord, and we have a nice, big, beautiful campsite booth uh, at the back of the other building. Please stop by and uh, let us know if you have any further questions. Thanks, everybody. And thanks, thanks so James. much.